Good morning, gents. How are you? Good, We're very good, well, good. Gus. Thanks very much for coming on this morning. Great to have you on. Gus, we're just talking there. I mean, and I, and I don't think I'm going over the top. I think the Brighton story the last few years is one of the great stories in football. Yes, I agree. Uh, I remember when I joined them, uh, when I met uh, Tony Bloom for the first time, uh, you know, the, the, the vision that he had for the club, uh, the pressure that he put to me in the second season to, to get up because we were moving to the Amex, to the new stadium. Uh, but also what you said, which is uh, fundamental, the, the recruitment system. Uh, it took me oof, maybe nearly two years to understand how it works. And, and, and we don't have time to, this morning to explain it to you no. because it's, it, but it's incredible. It's so detailed. It's so, uh, the, the way that Tony Bloom works uh, and the way he understands this uh, system is, is, is absolutely fantastic. And at that time, I don't know. I, uh, I don't remember, or they didn't say to me about the coaches, no? <laughs> they were recruiting the coaches in the same way. But I'm pretty sure now that they do something very, very similar to the players and to the coaches. And that's why they went for Roberto De Servi, wherever he was before. You know, people in England was probably saying, oh, who is Roberto De Servi? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But they knew and they were ready for the time that uh, Graham Potter was leaving to go and get him. Yeah. And, and look, and look what, you know, the consequences. Yeah. So, Gus, uh, from a Chelsea point of view now, it's been hard for Maurizio. Um, it, it, it's lack of goals and at times they look disjointed. He's trying to get it right. He says, I have no magical dust to sprinkle. You have to give me time. This is another tough, tough game for Chelsea tonight. They need a couple of games where they win a little run, put a run together. And I'm not sure it starts tonight. Yes, that's the problem. Um, I, I agree with you. They need to win. Uh, you know, win brings uh, happiness and confidence and so many things. Then obviously with a performance, it would be even greater. But this is coming from more than a year already. Eh? Remember that there is a change of coaches, a completely change of team. I was even thinking, going back to the Champions League final against Man City, and you see that <clears throat> Man City is still having six, seven, eight players, you know, that they will start in the best 11. And Chelsea go one, I think. Mm -hmm. uh, Thiago Silva. So it's, it's a big change. And normally, and I'm sorry for, for Mauricio Pochettino, the, the, the coaches, we, we pay the price. And, but it's very hard. I mean, if you look at the best 11 of Chelsea, I don't know how many they are playing now, really. So yeah. they, need, they need something special. And uh, let's hope that I start tonight. Uh, I tell you what, they, they do need something special, Gus, and, and that's in forward areas. They look as though there's a dearth of goals and goal scoring is a bit of problems. I know they've got one or two injuries and, and Kunku's been out and, and Brozier's just on his way back. Jackson, we're, we're speaking about Jackson earlier on there, Gus, and we like him, but we're not, we're not sure he's clinical enough. Well, you as a striker, you will know. Uh, I, I think the characteristics of Jackson is uh, most of the time the ball on the space at the back of the defenders. And Chelsea doesn't play that way. So maybe the way that Chelsea is trying to play doesn't really fit the best quality for Jackson. I, I like him, but he should play a different kind of football. Uh, uh, I think the only one I can see scoring in the last three, four, five weeks is Sterling. The rest, I, I, don't, I don't know where Chelsea is going to score goals. And, and that's a big problem, you know. You know, you, you score plenty and, and when, when you have to score goals and you cannot see a team scoring, it becomes uh, complicated for the manager as well. How do you play? You, you go higher, you defend and you try to nick a goal. You know, it starts changing your mind a little bit and, and it's tough to resolve that problem. So, uh, I don't know. Uh, it's a tough one for, for Mauricio especially. I'm sure that he's not sleeping a lot, he's thinking yeah. and trying to find solutions. Yeah, it's, it's not going to be easy. Um, Gus, just finally, Manchester City, we watched Tottenham play Arsenal. Tottenham played really, really well. Big game coming up at the Emirates soon, Arsenal against Man City. Do they have to win this one, or are Man City just too good? Well, Man City, Man City they are good. They're still good. You know, when, when you have that kind of uh, system, that identity, that clear one, that the commitment, and you have winners in the team, it goes on. 
I, I don't think they will stop until, I don't know, maybe when Pep uh, leaves the, the, the club. Uh, Arsenal needs something different. I think Arsenal right now is in that situation that for, for 20, 30 minutes, they are outstanding. Okay? And then something happened, like the goal the other day, you know? And you see the team going, okay, mm. <laughs> you know that feeling, mm. do we keep playing or we defend a little bit? You know, like yeah. you are in between. Yeah. And it happened in the first half and it happened in the second half. Yeah. So I think they need to find the winning strike, Arsenal. I hope not, by the way, because I don't support them. But uh, yeah. <laughs> it's, uh, no, the winning strike that they had the previous year. So that extra confidence that they don't stop playing and they keep playing at the same level independently on the results. Yeah. But right now, I think Arsenal is still you know, in a situation where it's not very clear where they're going. So... Let's wait and see. Brilliant, Gus. Thank you. Enjoy Thanks, tonight's team. football. Gus, thank you for joining us. Brilliant. Uh, Gus Boyer there. Wasn't it Neil Warnock who said he thought Mikel didn't have that, uh, that you know, that get them over the line winning mentality? Time will tell. Mm. I think, he'd, I've got to say, I, I think he's got a winning mentality. <clears throat> Whether he can get his team to. I've got to beat City for me. If City beat them, it's over. Well, it's over for Arsenal. Winning it, that is. Do you think have you changed your tune? Do you think Liverpool will be running City closer? Could than be, that? could be because I, th- I, I, I thought Arsenal would beat Spurs at the Emirates, but Tottenham for me were the strongest second half. No danger. I was impressed with Tottenham. Mm. Must admit. Talk Sport Breakfast with Alan Brazil Thursday and Friday morning, six till ten on AM on DAB via the Talk Sport app and on your smart speaker. Talk Sport.